Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to show you basically this shelf that I built specifically with the purpose of growing uh, hydroponically using old wine bottles. And yeah, I've grown from bottles before uh, and I had plans to build something that can take advantage of the, the Kratky system or the Kratky method. Uh, but at the same time, take advantage of verticality and also using natural light. So this shelf I built here right next to my balcony window. It's possible that it will not have enough light. So far, I have added uh, four shelves with plants. These are the top shelves which have the least light. So I have chosen the more... Uh, shade tolerant crop that is lettuce and basically I um, rinsed all of the bottles with boiling water uh, just to make sure I had to clean some of them or most of them before but just to make sure I added boiling water and then I added the mineral nutrients and then I added the seedlings and just a little bit of styrofoam uh, here just to hold them in place so they won't fall. This type of uh, hydroponics growing in in bottles is, is a bit more unforgiving in the sense that uh, it's more likely that these little seedlings are gonna dry out because maybe uh, it evaporates a bit too fast and the seedling doesn't grow the roots fast enough or something about placing it here makes it so that I actually accidentally get it out of water. Um, so I have maybe lost since the original ones maybe i've lost like um, four or five bottles that i had to replace but i had more seedlings so that was not a problem in these lower ones uh, that get more light i have added cherry tomato and i was also planning to add some strawberry seedlings but they are quite slow to grow so i don't know yet what i will add but basically, I wanted something that looked also aesthetically pleasing and was very low energy in the sense that I don't need to have water recirculating. I don't need to have artificial light. I don't need to have any movement, any moving parts, basically. I can just um, take the bottles and uh, and put them out uh, depending on on what I need. So let's go a little bit more into detail about how, how this is working. So these are, yeah, I think there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, so eight, eight shelves each can carry eight bottles. So it's a 64 uh, max plant production capacity. And the way they are made is that on the top, on the front facing part, you have a little support. That's where the, the neck or the bottleneck of the bottle is resting. And this would be obviously because if you had it completely vertical, uh, the plant growth would be limited by the, the, the shelf above. But in this way, you can uh, basically have almost unlimited. I mean, you have quite a lot of, of space here. As you can see, the plants here can grow all of this area without preventing the, the upcoming uh, shelf. But also you need something in the bottoms or in the back. Uh, so you can see here, there's also a little bit of support to make sure the bottle doesn't fall uh, backwards. The shelves themselves are not really nailed into place. They're actually uh, movable, uh, which is, yeah, I'm a bit, I was a bit concerned about them, but it can be useful as well. For example, if I, I need to put a, a bottle that is not perfectly fitting over this little gap, for example, maybe it's useful that the, uh, shelf is moving a little bit as you can see it's not really affecting the other ones because they have the support in the back um so this space maybe is not ideal this spacing for for putting the bottles in and out but on the other hand uh, i can also put them from the back so i'm going to show you how it looks in the back in a minute so yeah as luck would have it i i have this door also uh right next to my balcony uh, which makes it perfect to come in and if I'm having trouble removing a bottle, I can just lift it and there's a much wider gap here that I can take it out. 
Uh, building the shelf, one of my concerns was the weight, uh, because I mean, each bottle is almost a liter or a liter, and you have 64 of these, so that adds up to a lot of kilos. Um, in the way it was built, basically, it should support everything, but just in case, I added this little metal support. Uh, so we have uh, some extra support. If you're planning on building something similar and you don't have a, an easy way to access it from the back, so it's literally just standing against the wall. I My original idea was basically just to, to put some sort of wheel system or something that makes it easier to, to transport it slightly. I think that would be the best solution. But of course, then you have to make something that's strong enough to handle the weight. So it's really uh, up to you. Uh, but as you can see here, this this actually has also a very nice look from this perspective. And, and yeah, and the building itself is not perfect, but um, I think that the type of wood, you, you have a lot of freedom with the type of wood that you use and how you can make this work. There's a lot of kinks that you can improve for the support of the bottles, or if you're using another different type of container, like a mason jar, for example. Um, but yeah, basically, I think it both looks good and it accomplishes its objective. So yeah, this is my, this was my idea originally was I saw something called the Omega Garden, which is like a, a cylinder with an artificial light in the center and the rotating uh, part that is moving uh, along. And of course, you have the motor to move the whole thing, uh, the plants have a little bit of a plug that passes through the bottom uh, nutrient reservoir. You have a water pump that is recirculating that nutrient reservoir. It's It looks cool, futuristic, but it has a lot of moving parts and that's a problem potentially. So with this, I really wanted to do something uh, better in that sense. Initially, I made a design uh, for something that would approximate the look of the Omega Garden and still use a artificial light, but it would not rely on motors and pumps. So it would still use Kratky. But then I thought maybe there's a way to actually get rid of the, of the energy requirements altogether. And yeah, in theory, of course, this is not truly sustainable. I am reusing materials, of course, um, but the nutrient solution is still the main environmental impact here because it's it needs to be mined it needs to be transported it needs to be mixed so once this proof of concept has been has been made the next stage is to to switch the nutrient solution to something that is homemade that is recycled from existing nutrients and that of course is going to be the hardest part because when you're growing a Kratky system with such a limited amount of of water volume or nutrient solution volume uh, even for simple plants like lettuce, it can be easy to, to get it wrong. Uh, the plants can easily dry out. You can easily get root rot uh, in many different stages. That has happened to me growing a lot also with the uh, milk cartons and things like that. So really, it's, it's hard to, to get it perfect. But on the other hand, you can grow so many that it's, it's a bit more forgiving, this whole system. Um, so it's, it works out, I, th I would say overall, but that, that would be, I think my main, my main issue so far is that, uh, I am concerned about the root rot and usually to address the root rot, you have a constant bottom feeding film of a nutrient solution rather than the whole thing at once. It could be possible to perhaps have some sort of air pump with a lot of uh, different uh, tubing going into each individual bottle. It, can, it could easily fit in this uh, section and aerate all of these uh, without any issue. And that would probably reduce the, the root rot. But I think if you do a little bit more work preparing the growing container and handling the seedlings and things like that, it's possible that you don't even need that because that would add a lot of extra work and just the tubings. I mean, you have you need at least 64 different types of tubing. Uh, when choosing your growing container, it's also important to have 
something that is not very translucent. That's why I mostly have specific types of bottles. I don't have very transparent bottles. But still, it's possible that there will be algae growth here. So one could also ideally um, cover these. Uh, although then you lose the aesthetic uh, part of having all the different labels of the wine you've had over the years. So that can be, it's a trade-off, I would say. Um, worst case, if this system does not work as intended, it should work as intended. You can always move it to a place with more light, like I have my balcony. Although then you should probably do some sort of treatment to the wood because it's outdoors. And you can also use this shelf for other things. Of course, this these bars that are built specifically for the bottles kind of reduce the, the usefulness of this. And, and I mean, you could use it just as a wine storage place, uh, although then it shouldn't be in... Uh, in contact with the light but yeah i hope uh, you are kind of inspired by this i mean i think we need to start looking at more low energy ways of growing and this is what i could come up uh, with uh, it's a shelf it's easy to make these shelves i am eventually if, if if there's a positive response to this i will i will release the, the measurements i used if you want i mean this is by no means perfect. I think people can do a much better job than I did. I and I had friend I, I had help from a from a friend, so a much more experienced friend. So yeah. This is uh this is how it looks so far. I will probably post an update in a month or two to see how the lettuce is going. If I don't update it's probably because it didn't work very well and I'll be troubleshooting. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.